So you were saying, Mark, Yao Ming and all those guys, uh, there, there is no way. Is it? Yeah, I agree. I just, the lineup itself is good. And I don't think that this uh, team could stay with the Rockets. No, and, and I think that your shining light is honestly, is J.R. Ryder. And I love J.R. Ryder. He, he, he is, he's somebody that I feel like, just like Mahmoud, you know, guys that kind of got blacklisted or blackballed from the league and uh, almost buried that were phenomenal basketball players. And mm -hmm. that man could score with the best of them. Um, and he was so athletic. He just didn't, I guess, conform. So, you know, the league didn't always like him. But, man, he was so good. And he, he would give you guys a chance. But, again, he's always going to – he gets in the paint. He's always seeing somebody, and I don't think you guys have enough shooters. Yeah. So I got Rockets. I think all four of us do. But yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The next one was the Bucks and the Cavs. So that's uh, this, you know, a 14 19 matchup. And so the, it was a close game throughout. But uh, for the Bucks, then. You've got um, Marquise Johnson, led him in scoring. Uh, Greek Freak, Terry Cummings, uh, Sidney Moncrief, Ray Allen, Sammy Cassell, Vin, Vin Baker, uh, Michael Red uh, Middleton, and um, uh, what's Pierce's first name um, from back in the day? Paul? Uh, Paul Pierce. No, not Paul. Would you, who'd you say? It was Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce and Paul Pressey were both, but they were both. Wasn't it Paul Pierce? No. Oh, no. Um, no. Ricky. No, no. Ricky that was a guy from Iowa. That was a guy from Iowa. Uh, um, I didn't Paul put Pressy it. Paul Pressey is what I'm thinking of. But yes, yeah. Paul Pre Yes, and he probably could, could have slipped in there. Yes. But I cannot think of that other Press. Isn't, isn't it Ricky? Oh, my think, gosh. Wow. How can I not? I... So, anyway, going back to the stats here. Whoa, snap. Uh, then... For the Cavs, then you got LeBron, Kyrie, uh, uh, how do you say his, um, Iggy, Mark Price, K-Love, uh, Doherty, Terrell Brandon. It was an addition for them as a backup point guard, Larry Nance, and Ron Harper. So the higher seed goes to Tyler and I. This is kind of an old school lineup here besides uh, LeBron and Kyrie. Tyler, what do you, what do you got? You know some of the other guys? A little bit. Um, well, I guess K-Love also. Not too much. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit. So this is an interesting one. Um, I guess, uh, you know, LeBron's g good with the ball in his hands. You know, Mark Price was a very well, underrated point guard, but he could really – you could just put the ball in LeBron's hands and, and put uh, Mark Price in a corner, let him shoot. K-Love could inside out. Uh, Doherty with a little bit of post presence. Um uh, you know, when Harper was with the Cavs, we talked about it before. He was a scorer, and he and was a good, good wing player. You know, at the Bulls, you'd show what type of player Ron Harper was. He became that defensive, you know, minded and didn't get the shots, but he he was a very good scorer for them. Um, you know, Mark's talked quite a bit with Kyrie, but this is a dangerous team. I think they've got a little bit of everything. They don't have a big post presence. Uh, by the way, I forgot uh, Hot Rod Williams got a DMP in the game. So, um, you know, Doherty was, is really good. Um, with this team, you know, the Bucks don't have a true big-time post player either. You're talking to probably, you know, Vin Baker uh, is and Cummings are and Marquise Johnson are probably, you know, their, their post. So we could get away with it. But uh, this is an interesting game. But – the, obviously, LeBron's going to go against Anticumpa. Um, and then, but, you know, Kyrie, it, you know, matches up against Ray Allen. But, uh, you know, I would put the put the ball in, in LeBron and Mark Price's hand and let Kyrie score from the wing or put Price in the corner and let Kyrie attack. Um, also, K-Love, this, this is a team that could potentially score some points. But, I, you know, defensively in the post, uh, we're not as strong as some of these other teams. So we definitely may have to do some uh, doubling if need be, not against this team, though. And this team, we got to make – we got to stay on Ray Allen there, Tyler, and I think everyone else, we got to make him make some shots. And hopefully it's Sammy Cassell. Yeah. 
State. Yeah, I agree. No, I, I would definitely want the ball in Mario Price's hands and LeBron James's hands. I think it'd be interesting, like I said um, in our last, the last one that we did, to see Kyrie off the ball. I think if we were coaching, we'd have to make sure that the ball wasn't always stopping once it got to Kyrie. Obviously, we know he's a great isolation player, but if the ball is continuously stopping once it got to him, then we would have no movement. And I think, you know, to slow Giannis down, I think, you know, we'd want potentially LeBron on Giannis, but I think we'd also have to figure out other ways to guard Giannis so that LeBron's not wearing down on the offensive side of the ball because of what he's doing on the defensive side, trying to contain Giannis. So um, I think it'd be interesting. Yeah, and... The, our other wing player that had to would guard him would I guess would be Ron Harper. I you know you know if LeBron's not on him, I'm not sure who's on uh, Ante Kumpa. Be honest with you. Uh, I as I look at the Bucks, their their bench got guys who could shoot the rock <laughs> with with Red and Whitting, Middleton coming off. Is that's a that's a dangerous uh, crew there on the perimeter. Um, but we do have LeBron James. And that's what that's what I like to hear. So go ahead, Bucks. Well, I think you hit it on the head that we don't have a post player. The Mark Marcus or Marquise Johnson, a little bit before my time, kind of like whoever it was we were talking about earlier, um, six seven. So if he's one of our post presence, I think we're in a world of hurt. And uh, you know, everything's gotta go through the Greek freak and the, the 19 shots might be a little light. Now, pick, I trust that those guys can shoot it from deep, but look how many attempts they had in the game, you know. So we're going to have to change our offensive philosophy or something. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, LeBron himself, and I know, Mark, you mentioned in a previous podcast how underrated the Cavs are because they kept having to match up with the Bulls, kept meeting the Bulls when the Bulls were at their peak. There's a lot of nice players on the Cavs in addition to LeBron, but it all starts with LeBron. So, yeah, I, I've already kind of shown my hand. I'm going to go with the Cavs in this one. Uh, the Bucks, they got to even more than those 19 shots. You got to get the Greek freak going a little bit more. And, uh, I, yeah, we need to shoot it a lot and shoot it well from deep, like Pick said. Yeah, I. you know what? Again, I think when looking at it from a traditional standpoint, you are correct. We don't have the – the center. There is no center on this team, but I, I would argue that Giannis can guard Brad Doherty and probably give him fits, even though he's not a traditional center. I think that um, Vin Baker was big enough, played undersized at, at, at the five from time to time, depending on because they had him and Irvin Johnson, um, and Irvin didn't have much of a backup. So a lot of times Vin would be at the five for a little bit. He was big enough or bulky enough that he could he could guard certain players. I mean, Ilgowskis was a big, big dude. We, what, 7'3"? So, um, you know, it just doesn't matter who you have as a center. You're going to have him. He's going to be out overmatched. But Ilgowskis still wasn't, you know, a, a lifetime, multi-year, you know, major all-star or anything. He was just a a very good, formidable opponent who you had to respect. You could shoot the three a little bit. Um, but I still think between uh, our undersized posts with um, Vin and, and uh, Terry Cummings, who was only... 6'9"-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. at the most. 6'8", 6'9". Yeah. Um, but, you know, you throw Giannis in there being a generational player that is, you know can do everything, um, and then all the shooters. And I would probably honestly play Sam Cassell even less. Um, I think he throws stuff off. Uh, Sidney Moncrief was un is underrated as a defender. He was a phenomenal defender, uh, and he could flat out score and shoot the ball. Um, you know, you got TC was tough. Ray Allen's one of the best shooters of all time. Michael Red was a phenomenal shooter, and you brought up um, Middleton. Uh, great score, great two, number two guy. And Ricky Pierce was a 16 plus, I think at first career, he averaged like 16 and a half a game, yeah. 17 a game. So, I mean, the guy could score. Um, so, yeah, the Bucs could I score. Think, I'm, I'd, I'd go with the Bucks with this just because I think that all the shooting, it, yeah, I, I get Kyrie and, and LeBron, 
but we got Giannis and that I think counters that. You know how I feel about Kyrie on a team. He's going to get his. Um, I just think our team fits really well and defensively we'll be able to get it done because there's still a lot of length. And again, shooters everywhere, everywhere. All right, Tyler, what do you, okay, so there's one for the Bucks. Who you got? Um, I would go with the Cavs. I, I just, with LeBron James in my lineup, I'd like to think he'd put guys in the right situations and, you know, he makes everyone better. So I'd like to think that he would, would ultimately be the difference. Hey, here's the problem. He'll get you to game seven. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, if it was game seven. He'll get you there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that he'll close it. That's, that, that's my concern with LeBron. That's all. Yeah. So no, I, I agree 100%. This was, we were talking finals. We were talking, you know, game sevens in a playoff. Yeah, I, I think I, I'd change my answer. Ray? <laughs> I'm Cavs. I, you know, like Tyler said, but I'm just gonna hold my footing a little bit better. It's, it comes down to LeBron James. This isn't the finals. Maybe in a round or two, we talk about that game seven stuff. But this is first round, and I, you know, you, the Greek freak. Sure, you know, maybe he defends, you know, bigger than he is, but then it opens up someone else to a mismatch. I just, I'm Cavs, hundred percent. Well, the Greek Freak's my favorite player in the NBA right now. Ray Allen's one of my top five favorite players. It is very difficult from the heart going against the Bucs. I, I do like that team. I know they're undersized, but I do like that team. Gosh, I don't know. I don't want to vote. Can I, can I abstain? With my high school kids, my, uh, my, they, uh, one of them abstains and costed uh, one a quarterback a big time. I'm going to have to uh, – so then I – uh, if I go, if I go Bucks, I from the heart we would go to the simulation. Cavs win. How about that? <laughs> That's fair. All right. Next one: Pelicans and the Mavs. So the Mavs won. Man, we're not going to get to the end here. Uh, let's. So the Mavs Pelicans. Interesting, because the Pelicans are one of the uh, youngest or the new new NBA teams that yeah. um, in this tournament. So Chris Paul, AD, Zion, uh, uh, Tyreek Evans, Drew Holiday, David Wesley, Lonzo, uh, Jackson Hayes, uh, he was a ad late addition, um, Tyson Chandler, and then Brandon Ingram. Going against Mark Aguirre, Dirk, Doncic, Jimmy Jack, uh, Mashburn, uh, Derek Harper, Michael Finley, Rela uh, Rela Blackman, sorry, and then Donaldson and Jason Terry. So. Jason Terry gets a did not play? Oh right. My God. Yeah, because I guess they went, because I had Don Six starting, and then Derek Harper is the backup point, so there are apparently no minutes so for him. Minutes, sure. Yeah. yeah. So that means that uh, so Tyler, and I've got, yeah. Tyler and I have got the Pelicans. All right. So first off, you know, we're going to try to isolate Dirk. So you look at uh, Dirk probably is with the starting. I, he was starting. Now, according to maybe the uh, Mavs coach changes, but Dirk started at the center. So, and as did uh, AD. So I want to see what Dirk uh, can do against AD. And run some pick and roll with Dirk, uh, with so Chris Paul play a lot of two man game with Chris Paul and um, AD. You got Zion on the backside for you know dunks and cut, you know cutting to the rim, getting the offense rebounds. Um, you know Tyreek Evans. There were a couple years where he can really score. Drew Holiday can score. Uh, Lonzo's going to create and Ingram really. You know if we use Ingram from this year, uh, he really played well up to uh, when the NBA season stopped. So this seems a young team, but we have guys who can really score the ball. And we got, you know, once again, a point guard who's really good with the ball in his hand. Uh, defensively, you know, Tyson Chandler, um, we're, not, we're not terrible defensively either. And so this is a, this is a team that was kind of seated low, but uh, I, like, I like this Pelican team. Tyler, what do you got for them? Yeah, I really like this Pelicans team too, and it could be – Again, because I've seen most of these guys play, so I know their games a little bit better. But, um, 
you know, maybe, you know, push the ball a little bit if we could. I think that we do have a lot of athleticism. Um, you know, I'd like to have the ball in Chris Paul and Lonzo Ball's hands. I think that those are two point guards you can trust that will get the ball to Anthony Davis and guys like Zion Williamson and put them in the best situations to utilize their skill sets. Um, you know, a guy like Brandon Ingram coming off the bench, he's long, he can score as we've seen this year. Um, you know, Jackson Hayes is long too, Tyson Chandler. So I really do think that we have a lot of athleticism. And I think, you know, if you look at a guy like Dirk, that athleticism might be a lot for him to handle, especially on the defensive end. So, um, you know, we try to attack Dirk, like you said, and I do, I do really like this Pelicans team. Our issue would be consistent shooting from the perimeter. We don't have any true, tr true, true knockdown shooters. We got guys who can make them, but we don't have any of those knockdown shooters. So I'm sure that's something the mass coaches are going to address right about now. Yeah, uh, Jason Terry is our backup point guard. And the reason is, is he's a better shooter. Um, and and I, we need to keep him out on the floor for shooting. Uh, I'm not afraid of your team because of shooting or your lack of shooting. I think that we go a lot of pick and roll with Donkic and uh, um, Dirk, obviously. I think weak side, having shooters, Mashburn and Finley, uh, spot up weak side, rotating, have a wire, you know, posting up on, on weak side movement and so on. Because uh, Aguirre was a beast. People, again, even watching him with Detroit, people forget that was when he was playing more of a role and was later in his career versus when he was in Dallas. I mean, he was a 20-some point per game score, and people, without being able to shoot the ball very well, um, and people struggled to guard him. He was very tough, uh, two-way type guy. So I think that um, the, the athleticism part, I, I test. I agree with you, Tyler. That's always an issue. But, you know, there's also, when you, you know, you see that with Luca because he, he doesn't seem as a 6'6 point guard, does not seem as explosive as like when we think of a Penny Hardaway. However, I think Penny Hardaway would have struggled to guard Luca. Um, and I don't think, again, you watch Luca in a lot of him defensive matchups. He just he uses angles well, he's really smart, uses his length. He doesn't really get beat. And I know you're gonna agree to this pick, because again, that's what I always talked about with you, you just knew how to defend and keep a high hand. So you're going to at least contest, not get beat. You don't reach. And Luca does that. And I think that him and Dirk, you know, that was something that was always, always faced with Dirk. Well, he's, he's slower than that. Well, he still defends and he still, it was an MVP. You know, he just, he's so good. He always seems to overcome it somehow. I think that our depth with, uh, you know, those guards with Finley. And again, I'm, I'm playing Terry Moore. Mashburn was a, a phenomenal scorer and very versatile. Um, I think this this group is is very good, and especially with Harper playing less minutes. Or no, he's he's our did not play. <laughs> well, yeah, he's from Illinois. That's our Illinois guy. Okay, he's he's got, play. We have many, many guys in. Okay, Him and Donaldson, will. Donaldson will be our did not play. Harper's minutes are just going to be limited because Terry needs more. I don't Terry know how Donaldson get in, got in there because I, I had Porzingis in there to start with. I don't know what happened there. So that anyway. one would change it even more. I know. I We had to make a trade. I don't know how – I don't know what happened because I had Porzingis and somehow it, on a switch, Donaldson got in. But anyway, Ray, anything to add? Not too much. I mean, I do – I like our depth. I think we have some interchangeable parts. Um, one thing that is interesting to me, I, I think this would be a great matchup and a great game, even though, like you guys said, we have a lot of young Pelicans here. But even though a lot of those Mavs are from like an earlier era, I think they – sort of played a style that would be maybe more um it would translate better nowadays than it did maybe in the 80s and early 90s you know I, I whereas like you know the knicks we were saying they got to play that slow down half court game because you know there are a lot of those 80s early 90s types of players i think that same era of player for the mavs would translate better to current day i don't know if i described that very well but uh or articulated it well um yeah Everything that coach said, and I, you know, like I said, I like our depth. I like the interchangeable parts. Um, there are some concerns I have, you know, uh, post defense being one of them. But uh, yeah, I, I like the team.
I think this is the team for me that matches up well. I forget who it was earlier we were talking about, uh, maybe the Clippers. For me, I, I think it's this team. Yeah. I, and I would just add star power matters, and we have two MVP caliber players. Um, Dirk's an MVP. Luca is an MVP. I know he's young, but look at what he's playing at an MVP caliber rate. Um, he's right there with LeBron and anybody, Giannis, that you want to mention this year. Um, statistically, wins, it, it translates. The, the man is a winner. Um, I, I, we, we have two stars that are, are MVP caliber, and, and I don't see that on the other end. This will be basically an NBA jam game with Paul and Davis versus Luca and Dirk. Yeah. I got Mavs. Zion and Davis. Zion and AD on NBA Jam. Or you go Ball and Williamson, AD and Paul. Yeah. I like yeah. Ball and Williamson for hopefully for the next 10 years with what, yeah. with Lonzo, though, anyway. But I got Mavs. Tyler? Yeah, I got Mavs, too. And I think what's interesting, you know, I do really like the Pelicans team, but when you look at the Mavs team, you know, Luca only put up eight shots. So, you know, he wasn't – you know, putting up the, as many shots as we see him do, you know, putting up now. So if you've got Dirk and Luca who are getting a ton of touches and a lot of scoring opportunities, that's like Mark said, two MVP players. That's, that's hard to, to guard and hard to contain. Uh, Mark. Yeah. Mavs. Ray. I'll go Mavs, but I coach pick. I'll, I'll give I'll tell you, you have the right idea. If you go a little two man game with Paul and AD, that's your best bet. And you could sway me in an argument like based around that, but I'm going Mavs. All right, so Mavs move on. The next game, Bulls Hornets, the six first of 27. This is one that I re really probably we could save our Bulls talk for later. Sure. Because agree, yeah. this one, I mean, yeah. the Hornets got Kemba, um, Stephen Jackson, Muggsy Bogues, a lot. They've got you know Morning and LJ. Uh, Jared Wall, uh, yeah, that's no, that's not, yeah, Jared Wallace, uh, PJ Brown, Del Curry, Kendall Gill, and Kelly Tribuca versus Jordan with D Rose in his prime, Dang and Dang and Butler. This is a this is a pretty good team here. So, um, do we need to talk about this one too much? No, if you put me in charge of the Hornets, I would quit coaching. <laughs> I yeah. just I I just hope that Scotty Pippen got into foul trouble and that's why he only played 15 minutes. <laughs> right? That's no. the one thing I would say. Hey, why is Kukoc played three? What's Kukoc that? Kukoc played three minutes. Yeah. Kukoc only got three minutes. Yes. DJ's 15. Oh. Yes. So. Yeah, but it was a whooping. This one was a whooping from the start on the simulation. This one's a fun one. The Kings are the 23 seed versus the 10 seed Thunder, and um, it was simulation fugly. The Kings just dominated them. And um, well, actually, actually, you know what? Did I skip or did I not get this one in? Who knows? Any, did no, I you miss? skipped one. Oh. But, uh, I think it's another one we don't have to spend a ton of time on. I think the Celtics probably win that one pretty handily. Uh, so it's, oh, so, uh, so I skipped the Celtics and – the Wizards. Wizards. So let's, I'll go to that here yeah. since it's there. So there we've got uh, Jeff Malone, Gilbert Arenas, Beal Strickland Wall, um, oh. Gorat, uh, Karan Butler, Larry Hughes, Antoine Jameson, and uh, Brendan Haywood versus Tatum, uh, Ant Antoine Walker, Rondo, McHale. Paul Pierce, Jalen Brown, the legend, the chief, DJ, and Ainge. That's you say we don't want to talk much about this one? I don't no. think we need to. It's no. exactly what Tyler said. Look at the minutes. Look at the, the shots that some of your legends had. I mean, they, this was mop-up time early is what it looks like to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Wizards have some guard, guard play, but uh, overall team not even close. I mean, the, the Wizards come with Wall, Beal, Arenas. And Jeff, Jeff Malone could score back in the day. Uh, but uh, overall team, I, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't need to talk about that. So we'll go down to this one. This one, this one is an interesting one. So, so I skipped it maybe potentially, not intentionally. But the Kings, 
like I said, the higher seed, Weber, Pagea, Vlade, Bibby, uh, Boogie, Kmart, um, J. Will, Bagley, Reggie the Theus, and then De'Aaron Fox. With the Thunder, you've got Russ and the Glove, KD, Sean Kemp, Rashard Lewis, the X-Man, uh, Dale Ellis, Detlef Shrimp, Abaka, and Steven Adams. This one would have been one of the top matchups in the first round. Uh, you guys take who do you, which I'll let you pick. Who do you want there, Mark? Um, let me get the Thunder. Okay. Yes, I was hoping you're gonna. I want to. I want to hear you talk. Tell that you cut out. I need to hear it. What'd you say? Uh oh, Tyler's frozen on my screen. Yeah, he's frozen, frozen too. Frozen. All right, Tyler, what were you? What did uh, you say? We didn't catch it, catch it. Oh, sorry. I was hoping that Mark would say the Thunder because I want to hear uh, his thoughts on Russ and how Russ yeah. would play into his uh, strategy. Yeah. So, so that was the hard part, okay? That was the hard part. But um, I'm putting Russ at the two with Gary Payton, putting the ball in Gary Payton's hands. Um, and uh, I just think, again, I know that's tough, and you guys know how I feel about Russ, and I'm not backing down from that. But when I look at the guard play, um, and I love Bibby. I love Mike Bibby. I really do. De'Aaron Fox is a great young talent. But I think that the guard play between Westbrook, Payton, um, you know, even Ellis is a shooter. Uh, I think that the guard play there is just too dangerous. You got KD. Uh, with this lineup and all the size, we could easily play KD at the two um, with, this, with this roster. And that's really dangerous. Sean Kemp is, again, it, we're talking Sean Kemp at his best. And I think Sean Kemp at his best is a top five power forward. The problem was you didn't sustain it, um, you know, ch life choices and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But um, he was that good. Uh, Richard Lewis is a stretch guy who can shoot the ball really well. Um, Detlef Shrimp is phenomenal. He was so good. And then you got Ibaka and Steven Adams, who are two bigs, who, and, and I think Steven Adams is underrated and undervalued. He's just does his job. Um, he is. He, to me, is one of the scariest men in the NBA. I mean, you look at his size, his uh, ability to move. He played rugby. Um, so, like, the guy's just fearless. So I, I just love that group. I think they have every single piece that you need from a, a real point guard with Gary Payton who will run the show. Russ will just get out, run the wings, attack the rim and transition, kick when he has three people, and – kick to our shooters and they'll they'll knock down shots and I, I think we got bigs that can play catch lobs and, and run the floor so we're going to get up and down um be very aggressive and i think this team's dangerous ray are those stats right was russell westbrook seven of 21 from three point range i don't know what happened sorry it no That's... i know i'd have to go we'll go back because he's overall he's five of 14 no he had to. okay no, that's right, right? Maybe they're 7, 21 switched. overall, 5 of 14 from 3. What, yeah, I might have switched, and he had to shoot free throws. I, you know, at times I did this quick, that's late fine. at night. But anyway, sure. what do I, you think for your Thunder? No, I agree with everything Mark said. I, I, I like the Thunder team. Um, I don't agree with the score, the outcome of this game. Um, I, I feel like I would be a, a Thunder slash Supersonics uh, lean uh, but that was kind of a lopsided final. Uh, I mean, the Kings obviously have some star power. Um, yeah. They'd be an exciting team to watch. But, I don't know, there's some star power on that uh, Thunder team also. Yeah. So, Tyler, you want to start with the Kings? We'll... Yeah. Yeah, I can I can try. Um, you know, when you look at this Kings team, I would like to involve Boogie Cousins a little bit more, maybe get him more touches and see, see what he can do. Um, you know, De'Aaron Fox is an exciting young player. Um, you know, Mike Bibby was obviously a really good point guard. Um, you know, try to maybe get him and, and DeMarcus Cousins and some pick and rolls. But I got Thunder team, and the, the one thing that stands out to me is how would we contain Kevin Durant? You know, I, he's just so versatile. He can score in so many different ways, and I think that we would struggle. Even though he only was 6 of 9 and only put in 17 points, you know, a guy like Kevin Durant, if you focus on him too much, then you're leaving you know, Sean Kemp, Russell Westbrook, Gary Payton, guys like that. So I personally think that the, us as coaches would struggle a game plan with. It's a game plan for this Thunder team. 
Well, first off, to take care of KD, who's the one that uh, hit Tanya Harding in the in the knee? Nancy Carey. Or <laughs> oh no, it was Tanya Harding hitting Nancy Carey. Yeah. We're taking Tanya Harding and she before the game and pre-game as he's running out, she's going to hit up hit to KD in the knee. <laughs> then then would be a better matchup for us. But this the Kings team, they were fun at you know they were up and down. Jay will um, you know handle it. C Webb for a big guy can handle it. Vlade, you know, play through Vlade. Uh, you know, they could handle they could handle it. Baby was like a good point guard. Uh, and then you add the young guys, you know, Reggie Theus could score back yeah. in the day and he looked good. Um yeah, you know, Boogie, Boogie's a Boogie could you play through Boogie. It's an interesting team. I think this team King's team could score a lot of points. Um, we'd have to find ways to defend. The Thunder's really probably has three Hall of Famers right there at the top with Westbrook, Peyton, and Durant. You know, and they just said with Kemp. Um, it would be we would have our hands full, but like I said, we we have a little diverse offense. We could go through different guys. Peja could you know shoot the ball. Bibby could shoot it. Kmart could shoot it. Um, I'm a little concerned. You know, Bibby Kmart. You know, our, our little our small. You know, Peyton liked to back down their guards. Uh, Russ is Dane. You know, Russ is a bully. So it would be interesting. But I this would be a fun game to watch, and. If we had to defend, um, we would just hope that they wouldn't that uh, the Thunder would miss it. Obviously, when you've got three guys like that, I you would have to get the ball to KD's hands and say, okay, you know, Rashard Lewis, Dale Ellis, you're going to have to beat us. Is this the way it's going to be? Because uh, you know, if KD's posting up at that mid post, we got to get the ball out of his hands. Same thing for Gary Payton. So I would bring some double and obviously get up and down. This would be an up and down, real fun game. Ray, who you got? Thunder. Mark. Thunder. Tyler. Yeah, Thunder. Yeah, I do. I, I Thunder too. But the, this would, like I said, I already said, it would be a fun game. So there's the second one. Whoops, that's not it. Let's try again. Hello. Okay, there we go. Uh, where am I? Right here. And we've got the Thunder moving on. All right. We've got four minutes and the last game, which there's no stats because they finished today. The Hawks, the 15th seed versus the Warriors. All right. So, and it was a whooping in the simulation by the Warriors. We'll take a look at the teams real quick. Uh, who, do, 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 do. Who am I looking for? Warriors. Hawks, Warriors. There we go. Hawks, Warriors. I've told this story before. Like, so when the, the Bulls were getting real big and, you know, Jordan's coming into the league and whatever, my brother was a real big Jordan and Bulls fan. And I was like robbing to his Batman type thing, you know. Um, so I like the Hawks. Hawks, you know, had Dominique Wilkins, who was sort of like number two at that time, you know. So I gravitated towards him. So as much as I like the Hawks players on this roster, I just I believe 100 percent of that the Warriors would take them because you know the Warriors sort of created the style of play that you're seeing in the NBA right now and uh, too much firepower in in my opinion. So I got to find the Hawks, but the Warriors go Curry, Richmond, Thompson, Mullen, Draymond. Uh, UTEP, two-step, Tim Hardaway. This is Marcelonis. I don't know how to spell it because I because he was in. Baron Davis, Jason Richardson, and Bogert. Bo, uh, and I can't find the Hawks for some reason. Uh, I saw them. They were like the bottom of one of the sheets. Yeah. So while you look, I'll just say one more yeah. thing. I, I wasn't even thinking the, the Warriors with the three-headed monster that uh, yeah. Pick likes so much. I, I was and, thinking modern-day Warriors, but they – a nice mix of like early '90s and current day. That's gonna be a good team. Yeah, yeah. and then the Hawks: uh, Trey Young, Doc, Neek, Paul Millsap, uh, Horford, and I don't think Blaylock was in. You got Corver, uh, Willis, Joe Johnson, and Tree Rollins. Just don't have the just don't have the lineup. I don't know what else to say. Neek would Neek might Neek and Trey would get their 25-30. But after that, I'm not sure. You know, Paul Millsap's a good NBA player. Horford is a, you know, good NBA player. But that that Warriors team could can score. And Steve yeah. Kerr's coaching them, look out. 
and they're deep. Yeah, they everyone everyone you know can really score. You know, you they're not super big with Dray. You know, got Draymond and Boger, but they find a way. So you know, we're at about a minute for our last game. Uh, we all probably say Warriors. Yeah. Warriors. Yeah, Trey Rollins is on that roster. <laughs> That's enough to just show the discrepancy in the all-time list. Would you rather have Tree Rollins or what the or um, John Concat? Oh, probably. Oh boy. Wow. I lost my tournament here. That's like that's like voting for a president. That's oh. like the options they give us for presidential elections. It's like, do you want shit or this shit? Like, sorry about this. <laughs> All right. So, so we're less than a minute, guys. I Less than a minute, guys. This was awesome again. And I appreciate it. Uh, you guys, it, it, this this is makes my week. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my family. But talking NBA with you guys is awesome. And so yeah. for the second round, before we lose it, we've got Lake, Lakers, Raptors, Pistons, Blazers, Heat, Suns. Oh, wow. Uh, Magic Net. No, we took we took the Jazz, didn't we? So mm -hmm. Jazz, Magic, Jazz, okay. Rockets, Cavs. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna not gonna get it because I hit the wrong button. Uh, we've got.